Powerhouse Church, welcome to Sunday service. Today is the day that the Lord has made, so let us rejoice and be glad in it. Go ahead and start sharing this video. Start tagging your family members, your friends. Let's all come together to worship God. And go ahead and get your family together, get your children together, and let's jump in the river together. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We are here this morning ready to worship. Amen. Just begin just to worship where you're at in your house. Hallelujah. God, we, we proclaim your word this morning. We proclaim the blood of Jesus upon every house. God, we believe in the power of the Holy Spirit that is able to come into every home. God, we believe in the cross. We believe in the price that you paid. We believe that, God, that you sacrificed. God, we surrender every need this morning. We surrender everything, every desire, God. And we believe that your power will be evident this morning. We believe that your power will, God, flow throughout this earth. Jesus, you are so good. You are so good. So this morning we sing of the goodness of God. We sing of the love of God. And we begin to proclaim your holiness, your worthiness, God. You're so worthy. Hallelujah. 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 I love you, Lord. Hold your mouth.
mercy and of your grace, God. It's unending, God. It's a river flowing, God, and we're jumping in this morning, God.
powerhouse. How you doing this morning? How many know that God loves us? He loves you this morning. And I believe somebody needs to hear that, that God loves you and God has a purpose and a plan for your life. You know, our God is faithful. We serve a good God. We serve a merciful, gracious God. Amen. And so I want, to, I want you to know this morning that God cares about you. And no matter what you're going through right now, whatever you're facing this morning, I'm here to tell you that God is with you. God is with you this morning. Amen. Amen. This morning, we're going to hear a powerful word. Amen. In just a few minutes from my, my wife, Pastor Rosie. And I want to encourage you to tag someone right now. Amen. Because you're, you're, gonna, you're in for a treat. Amen. I know God is, has a word for you. He has a word for your family. And so don't you know, don't just hold this word for yourself, but tag someone. Let them know, hey, you know, you need to hear the word of the Lord this morning. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, I want to receive today, this morning, tithes and offerings. Amen. And I want to read to you a scripture that's found in the book of 2 Corinthians. Amen. Chapter 9, verses 6 through 8. And the Bible says this. It says, here's my point. A stingy sower will reap a meager harvest. But the one who sows, listen to this, who sows from a generous spirit will reap an abundant harvest. Let giving flow from your heart and not from a sense of religious duties. Let it spring up freely from the joy of giving, all because God loves, listen to this, a hilarious generosity. Yes, God is more than ready to overwhelm you with every form of grace so that you will have more than enough of everything every moment and in every way he will make you overflow with abundance in every good thing you do amen can i tell you this morning god loves a hilarious giver he loves those he, not not to say he doesn't love you but there's something about when we just give freely to the kingdom of god can I tell you something as well? You could never outgive God. You could never outgive God. And I'm here to tell you this morning that the more seeds that you sow, the more you're going to reap a greater harvest. Church, right now is not the time to hold your finances to yourself. Amen. But continue to trust God. Continue to believe that God is going to continue to pour out blessing after blessing after blessing. I've heard many testimonies and people tell me how God has been so good that they're getting checks in the mail, amen. They're just getting money coming in. And can I tell you something? It's because these people are giving. They're sowing, amen. They're tithing and giving offerings into the house of God. And so if you want to experience that overflow of abundance of God's blessings, I'm here to tell you this morning, sow into the kingdom. Don't let fear grip you from giving, from sowing into the house of God. But give this morning. Trust in God because God is your provider. Amen. God is your source and God will provide all the resources that you need. Amen. Not just financially, but God will also continue to have his covering over your body and everything else. Amen. And so I encourage you this morning to give. I'm going to share with you three ways that you can give this morning. One of, it, one of them is you can go to powerhouseoc.org, amen. That is one way of giving. Secondly, you can text to give. And that number is 714-710-1981, amen. You could just text that number and write the amount that you would love to give to, to Powerhouse Church, amen. And thirdly, you can call this number, which is 562 298-7145. Amen. You can call that number if you want to feel more safe in doing that. But if you're going to call that number, please do it after the service. And you'll be able to talk to someone. And you can personally give your tithes or your offering. Amen. But let's go ahead and pray this morning as we give to the Lord. Let's pray. Father, we thank you this morning. I pray for every individual right now, God. I pray that they trust in you. That they continue, God, to be faithful in their tithes and offerings. Lord, that they continue to sow into the kingdom of God. Because we know that the more that we sow, God, the more, Lord, we'll, we'll see blessings after blessings. So I thank you this morning.
And I just pray, God, continue to pour out your blessings over your people this morning. I thank you this morning. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Powerhouse Church, I thank you again for your faithfulness and your giving and your tithes and offering. Continue to do that, amen. But this morning, we're going to hear a powerful word, amen, from my wife, Pastor Rosie. So I pray that you're ready to receive again quickly. Tag someone right now because I believe God is going to speak to all of us, amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Thank you for that introduction. Good morning, powerhousers. I hope you're all doing well, feeling good this morning. It's an awesome morning, an awesome day, a beautiful day. Amen. And um, I was praying, and um, as I was praying and getting ready, it's an honor, always an honor and a privilege to share God's word. I was praying, and I'm going to share a message this morning that I believe is a right now message. I shared it before um, at a woman's conference, but um, I believe God kept uh, bringing this message back up, placed it in my heart. And so tag somebody, like my husband said, like pastor said, tag somebody. It's great to have, um, even though we can't be together physically, it's great to have church together online, um, tagging each other, um, you know, responding to the, to the word. I love doing that. Amen. And so I hope that you do that this morning and get ready, get ready, get your word, get a Bible, get a notepad, get a pen, as I hope you take notes this morning. Amen. And again, I'm, um, the title of this message is, It's Time to Plant Some Roots. Let's pray. Father, I just thank you for this glorious morning. I thank you, Lord, for everyone watching, everyone listening, everyone hearing your word. I pray a fresh encounter by the Holy Spirit this morning. We invite you, Holy Spirit, to come in and do what only you can do. Father, I don't know what your people need this morning, but you do. And you have a way of speaking to us through your word, through a message. You'll use anybody. And I'm so grateful and thankful that you can use a soul like me, Father, to encourage and to bless your people this morning. So give us ears to hear what your spirit is saying. Have your way, Holy Spirit. And we invite you, come and do it, God. Only you can do it, God. We give you all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor. In Jesus' mighty name, and we all said, amen and amen. We're going to turn to Ephesians 3.17, and I'm going to read the, the Passion Translation this morning. It says, then by constantly using your faith, the life of Christ will be released deep inside you. And the resting place of his love will become the very source and root of your life. So as we look on this scripture, as we hear this scripture, as we dissect this scripture, it says by constantly using our faith. What is faith this morning? It's the substance of things hoped for, right? The evidence of things not seen. So we're constantly looking to the eternal, to the heavenlies, to the things that are not seen. We put our eyes and our focus on Jesus this morning. We're constantly moving by faith. We're not allowing the things of this world to dictate how we feel and what we do, but we're looking to the word of God and to Jesus himself for the answer, right? Because he's the answer. In Jeremiah 12 too, God promises us a good outcome if we dare to dig our roots deep into him. He says, you have planted them, yes, and they have taken root and they grow and yes, they bear fruit. So when our roots are deeply planted in Christ, in Christ alone, we were going to we're going to have a good outcome no matter what is happening no matter what comes our way amen the definition of rooted is established deeply and firmly we got to go deep this morning church we got to go deep into Christ we got to go deep into his word deeper still that's what he promises he promises those that seek him they're going to go deeper still from glory to glory that's where he takes us amen so tell somebody it's time to plant some deep roots 
But we're also, we're going to grow. We're going to bear fruit when our roots are deep. But we're also going to live in peace, knowing that we are loved. My, my husband said it this morning. Somebody needs to hear that. You are loved this morning. We are loved so much by our Father God. Amen. So when we dare to dig our roots deep, we're going to blossom, we're going to prosper, and we're going to mature. Nobody likes a fruitless tree, right? We know the story about the fig tree. Jesus didn't like that it was fruitless. Why? Because the whole purpose was to bear fruit. Figs, right? Well, that's our purpose, to be fruitful. How can a tree, though, that um, is shallow, how can it grow fruit unless it's deeply rooted? And that's just the same with us, church. Unless we are deeply rooted, we're not going to bear any fruit this morning. So we don't live in part of the world that has major storms or tornadoes or hurricanes. But I've read that in Tornado Alley, winds whip through and the trees that have shallow roots are tossed about like a toothpick. I mean, crazy weather is happening all over the world. And thank you, Jesus, we don't live there. We need to pray for those that live in those kind of places. But have you ever seen a video? Have you ever seen um, on Facebook uh, a, a tornado whipping through an area? You'll see that everything and everyone, it's no respecter of persons, right? It's no respecter of things. When that wind whips through there, that tornado whips through there, everything is demolished, right? But it's so crazy because the trees with deep roots that have deep roots that go far into the ground, they're anchored in place. He is our anchor, church. He's the one. Jesus is the one that holds us in place. So these deeply rooted trees, they continue to grow year after year, and they continue to survive storm after storm. In the same way, God is challenging us to have those same kind of deep roots, meaning I'm not moved by what I see, the storm around me, the circumstances. I'm going to stay firm. I'm going to stay sure, secure, knowing that I'm loved. I'm going to keep my eyes looking towards the heaven, towards the things that are not seen, Right? Because I know that these things, this world is going to fade away. But one thing is sure, and that is the word of God and Jesus. So God is challenging us to have that same kind of unwavering faith this morning. Can somebody say, my faith is unwavered? I'm going to survive any storm, any testing, because my faith is in, the, is in the one who has me exactly where he wants me. Do you believe that this morning, church? That God has you exactly where he wants you? He's not up there scratching his head, wondering why you're going through that situation right now. Come on. He knows exactly what we're going through. He's still on the throne, and he is still in control. Come on, tell somebody he's in control. This whole season is not a shock to God, right? But think about that. Trees with shallow roots are tossed about like a toothpick, but trees with deep roots are anchored in place. So we're going to read the word of God, and we're going we're gonna to learn what he teaches us about shallow and deep roots. So I hope you have your word. Uh, let's go. We're going to read the parable of the sower in Mark 4. Three through nine. Let's go to our word, our swords this morning. This is what's going to get us through. Amen. Mark four, three through nine. And I'm going to read the Passion Translation. It says, consider this. A farmer went out to sow seeds. As he cast his seeds, some of it fell along the beaten path, and soon the birds came and ate it. Other seeds fell onto gravel with no topsoil, and the seeds quickly sprouted since the soil had no depth. But when the days grew hot, the sprouts were scorched and, the, and withered because they had insufficient roots. Other seeds fell along, among the thorns. So when the seeds sprouted, so did the thorns, crowding out the young plants so that they could produce no grain. But some of the seeds fell onto good, rich soil that kept producing a good harvest, 
Some yielded 30, some 60, and some even 100 times as much as was planted. If you understand this, then you need to respond. You know, Jesus wants us to get it, right? He wants us to understand what he is saying, what he's trying to tell us. So he goes on to explain this parable. And we're going to read that in Mark 4, 14 through 20. He says, let me explain. The farmer sows the word as seed. And what falls on the beaten path represents those who hear the word, but immediately Satan appears and snatches it from their hearts. Verse 16, the seed sown on gravel represents those who hear the word and receive it joyfully, but because their hearts fail to sink a deep root into the word, they don't endure for long. For when trouble and persecution comes on account of the word, they immediately wilt and fall away. And the seed sown among thorns represents those who hear the word, but they allow the cares of this life and the seduction of wealth. Hello, somebody. And the desire for other things to crowd out and choke the word so that it produces nothing. Verse 20, but the seed sowed, sown on good soil represents those who open their hearts to receive the word and their lives bear good fruit. Some yield a harvest of 30, 60, even 100 times more than was sown. So if you're taking notes this morning, I, this was such a powerful passage of scripture. And Jesus is trying to teach us something here. Amen. So if you're taking notes, write these um, down this morning. The dangers of having shallow roots. Are you ready? Number one, the deceiver comes and the word is no longer remembered. And that's in Mark 4, 15. We just read it. So when the word comes, immediately Satan appears and snatches it out of their hearts. Have you ever been in a service? Have you ever listened to a great preaching? And then you go to your car, you get in, and something happens. And then uh, later on, somebody asks you, what did they preach about today? And you're like, um, it was good. But um, let me think. I, I can't even remember at the moment. You know, that's how quickly the enemy comes. When we're distracted, we get upset, we get angry because the line at where we went to go eat was a little bit too long, right? Something happens and immediately that word is taken from our hearts. That's what the enemy wants to do. He doesn't want that seed, that word that we got, that revelation to sink deep. Because he's afraid of a believer who knows their authority, who knows the word of God. That's what he doesn't want. He doesn't want us to know the word of God. So that's why I say take notes. So you can go back, you can remember, you can meditate on what God is speaking to us in that moment. Amen. Number two, they endure for a short, a short time. In Mark 16 and 17. It says, those that hear the word receive it joyfully, but because their hearts fail to sink a deep root into the word, they don't endure for long. So they run when, when temptation, when persecution, when trouble comes, they wilt and they fall away. Have you ever seen that? Been saved 24 years, and I've seen people that are so on fire for God. God is doing a great thing, but then boom, a stumbling block comes, a rock in the gravel, something happens, and immediately they're gone. They wilt away. Why? Because they didn't dig into this word long enough to hear what God was saying. Amen. Number three, these are the dangers of having shallow roots. I know that's not nobody watching, but I'm just saying these are the dangers. Number three, they remain unfruitful. Mark 4, 18 through 19. It says, the seed was sown among the thorns represents those that hear the word, but they allow the cares of this life and the seduction of wealth and desires for other things to crowd out and choke the word so that it produces nothing. 
You know, there's so many things in this life that will try to pull us away from God and from his word so that we become unfruitful. God's purpose and plan for us, church, today is to be fruitful, to multiply, right? So we see that the problem with shallow roots is the moment that any type of issue or problem arises or storm comes, we run away from God instead of running to God and allowing our roots to go deep. I mean, life has its difficult seasons. You might be saying, hello, yeah, we're all facing that storm this morning. The whole world is in an uproar. The whole world is in a situation this morning, right? We're going through major discomfort. A lot of us have been taken out of our comfort zones. We're witnessing how crazy and fast that things can change in a blinking of an eye just like that. And we're out of toilet paper. No more toilet paper on the shelves. I, can't, I still can't figure that one out. Amen. But who would have thunk it? Who would have predicted it? Who would have thought about it? That we'd be here today not being able to be with one another. Not being able to come and worship at the altar. Not being able to hug on somebody. To love on somebody. Nobody could have predicted this, right? Things change, friends, in an instant. What do we do in situations like this? We go to the word. God says in Psalms 46.10, Be still and know that I am God. In 1 Thessalonians 5.17, it says, Pray without ceasing. Don't stop praying. Psalms 27.14, it says, Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. You know, these are just a few scriptures that I've read to you this morning, but there's so many scriptures in this word that is going to get us through this season, church. We just got to take the time to dive deep into this word. But just these three that I read, what, it, what did they say? They said, be still, pray without stopping, and wait upon the Lord. The hardest thing is to be in the waiting how many of you have been in a waiting room, waiting on a loved one in a hospital? It seems like eternity. Minutes seem like eternity, right? When you're waiting. But can I tell you something? We can't have deep roots unless we wait upon the Lord. Deep roots takes time. Tell your neighbor that this morning. Deep-rooted Christians takes time time. Being in the oven instead of the microwave. You know, things that are in the microwave don't taste as good as those things that you put into the oven, but the oven takes longer. Hello, somebody. Are you listening? So as I prepared this message long ago, I came across this article. I'm going to read it to you this morning. The Japanese introduced a tree to the world that is called a bonsai tree. It measured in inches instead of feet as other trees are measured. It is not allowed to reach anywhere near its full growth potential, but instead it grows in a stunted miniature form. The reason for it growing in stunted miniature form is that when it first stuck its head out of the ground as a sapling, the owner pulled it out of the soil and tied off its main tap root and some of its branch feeder roots and then replanted it. I hope you're listening this morning, church. By doing this, its owner, its uh, grower deliberately stunted its growth by limiting the root's ability to spread out and grow deep and take in enough of the soil's nutrients for a normal growth. So what was done to the bonsai tree by its owner is what Satan has purpose to do in the life of a believer if he can. He's trying to tie off our taproot of prayer, our taproot of worship, our taproot of going into that secret place, our taproot of re reading the word of God. He's trying to limit our receiving in power and in his presence and in the word what God supplies for our spiritual growth. 
There's so much that we can learn from this article that I just read. But two things really popped out to me this morning. Number one, uprooting immaturely will stunt your growth. The moment that we choose to run, when the going gets hard, when the giant Goliath stands before us and we run in fear, we run um, like chickens without a head, we're afraid, we're full of doubt, we're full of insecurity, we just run, right? Because we don't want to face that trial, we don't want to face that thing. Can I tell you this morning, that will stunt our growth. Number two, replanting can stunt our growth. I've seen it, friends, over and over in marriages. Sometimes we think that if I was only married to that person, my life would be so much sweeter, so much better. The grass always looks greener on the other side, right? Replanting can stunt our growth. What is God trying to teach us? I've seen it in the church as well. The moment we get offended, the moment um, somebody crosses our path, somebody tells us something that we don't like, something that we don't want to hear, so we think, I'm just going to go to the other church because in the other church, I'm not going to have these kinds of problems. Little do we know that the other church has the same kind of people with the same kind of personality, with the same kind of uh, stuff that bothered us from the first church. Replanting can stunt your growth immaturely, replanting immaturely, uprooted immaturely can stunt our growth. The moment that we choose to run instead of waiting on God, we lose out on our roots growing and being able to spread out and grow deep. Somebody say it's time to grow deep. So I have a little example for you this morning. So when I took this tree out at a woman's conference that I was sharing this word with, a lot of the the, um, responses that I got were, aww. And as I brought this tree up this morning, maybe you you had the same kind of response. Aww, look at the little bonsai tree. It's so cute, right? It's so little. I mean, I can take this tree out, I can put it up here, I can show you it, I can put it on my desk at work, I could put it on my house, on a shelf. It's a cute little decoration, right? Well, think about it. This poor little tree was deliberately stunted, always being a miniature form of the real thing that it could have been. Imagine me trying to bring in any other tree outside to you this morning, bringing it here on camera in front of Facebook. That's just not going to happen, right? What's the purpose of a tree? I looked it up. The purpose is it provides oxygen, improves air quality, preserves soil, provides shade, produces fruit. Think about this poor little tree. It didn't even have the chance to show its full potential. Are you catching where I'm going this morning, church? Some of us have allowed the enemy to stunt our growth so we can just be a cute little miniature form of the real thing. An imitation looking like the real thing. I'm a Christian, but there's no deep roots in us, so we can't wither the storm. What's our purpose? What has God called us to be this morning? The salt of the earth, the light of the world, the head and not the tail, the lender and not the bower, above and not beneath. We're called to go forth, to reach souls, to lay hands on the sick, knowing that they shall recover, to go and to cast out demons. We're called, we've been given authority, we've been given dominion, we have the keys, we have the access to heaven. We're called to be sons and daughters of the king to do the things that he has done and greater things shall we do than those who have gone before us have you forgotten your purpose this morning church we're not called to fear to hide when the storm comes we're called to rise up to say peace to say peace to that storm 
Devil, you will not come in this home because this home is covered by the blood of the Lamb. We need some power-filled Holy Ghost Christians that are going to rise up today and be bold as a lion, yet gentle as a dove. We need some Holy Ghosters. Come on now. I don't know about you, but I refuse to be just a cute little immature form um, of the real thing. An imitation of the real thing. Walking around with no power, no anointing, no fruit, no direction. Just being tossed about when the winds come, when the storm comes, like trees with shallow roots, like a toothpick pulling my hair out, wondering what's going to happen to me now, what's going to happen tomorrow. Oh, no, church, not me and not you this morning because we're going deeper. Somebody say, we're going deeper. Are you with me this morning? I can't just be a Sunday or a Wednesday goer and expect to wither the storm. It takes time, church. I was just listening to Isaiah. I think his last name is Saldovar, powerful preacher. And he was talking about drive-through prayers, drive-through uh, anointing. Everybody wants it quick. Everybody wants it fast. How do I get that anointing? How do I preach like that? How do I get deep like that? Let me tell you something. It doesn't happen overnight, church. Just like deep roots, they don't happen overnight. It takes time. We got to stand through the storm. We got to let our roots go deep so that we don't waver, so that we don't get sidetracked, so that we don't get distracted when the enemy comes in. We're running around. Who are you this morning, little David? Come on. There's no giant big enough than our God. Jesus is the one that brings peace in the midst of the storm. We got to call upon the name of Jesus. I'm going off of my notes this morning. Come on. Because I felt that. You know, this little uh, tree, it had some little directions on it. And I was reading these little directions. And it says you got to keep it in the sunlight for it to grow. Right? And you got to um, water it from time to time, but don't give it too much water because otherwise it'll die and wilt. You know, and I was reading that little, um, what do you call it? It's just like a little uh, uh, thing that has little directions on it. I hope you're not a Christian that has little directions on you too. Look it. If I move it too much, church, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to um, cause it to die, Right? While I was thinking about that, this little tree is so sensitive. You know, it's so delicate. And you know, sometimes those with shallow roots can be very, very sensitive and very, very delicate. You can't tell them no. You can't tell them the truth because the truth hurts. You know, those with shallow roots, they don't like accountability. They don't like to be discipled. They don't want to hear that what they're saying could be wrong. There's something more than what they're saying. They don't want to know that. They don't want to hear that. Why? Because their roots are shallow. Have you ever met a shallow person? It's all about them. They're all about the outside looking good. But they don't go to the deep heart where God is looking. God is looking at the inside, friend. He's not looking about what we look like at the outside when we go to church when we go outside we're raising a hallelujah he's looking at what are we gonna do when the storm comes are you still gonna trust me are you still gonna seek after me can I tell you no that's not my will for your life and are you still gonna serve me come on we gotta stop having shallow roots church that's not God's plan for us. We're called to be fruitful. We're called to multiply. He wants us to be mature Christians. It's time to grow up, church, because the world needs some mature, strong people of faith that are going to tell somebody it's okay. Come on. God's going to get us through. I know that he didn't heal you from all of that just so you could be a cute little immature form uh, of the real thing. 
But he's called us to be like that strong, huge, mighty oak tree that has roots so deep that nothing or no one can pluck up or take out. He's called us to be like that tall, graceful palm tree that can bend and twist in any condition but won't break. That's who God has called us to be. We're going deep. Who's going deep with me? I'm almost closing. Don't get weary. Come on, it's almost half time. You're going to eat in a minute. Maybe you're already eating. Hallelujah. Put it down. Listen. <laughs> Listen this morning. Don't get distracted. There's so many distracted distractions. You know, that's interesting. Thank you, Jesus. Because in prayer this morning, I was praying. And you know what God was showing me? Sometimes we, our spouses will even be a distraction. We got our eyes on our spouses this morning looking at what they're doing or what they're not doing. Are they worshiping? Are they in their word? And God is saying, what are you doing? You do you. You be you. I'm working on him. I'm working on her. You just do what I've called you to do this morning. Sometimes our kids can be a distraction. Oh, I can't watch the video, Pastor, because my kids are running around. You know, we got our eyes on our kids. We're looking to our kids. And God is saying, what are you doing? You be the example. You set the example, the bar high, and they will follow. A certain landowner planted trees in the driest part of his property. So that the trees would grow their roots deep and far enough to find the water supply. Why did he do that? So that the trees would grow and mature and be strong and be anchored this morning. Are you in a dry season? Come on, wow. Are you in a dry place this morning? Who isn't? Could it be that God has allowed this season in our lives so that we can grow deep, so that we can grow deeper, so that we can find him, so that we can seek him, so that we can go back to the basics, go back to our prayer closets, go back to our time in worship, go back to the reading of his word. He's taken away all these distractions because he wants our full attention. He wants our full attention. Why? Because he wants us to grow. He wants us to mature. He wants us to be strong, to be fruitful, and to multiply. I'm coming down to a close. What are the benefits of, of deeply rooted Christians? We read it, right, in Mark 4.20. I'm going to read it again. Mark 4.20. It says, but the seed sown on good soil represents those who open their hearts to receive the word and their lives bear good fruit. Some yield a harvest of 30, 60, even 100 times more than was sown. So the benefits of those that are deeply rooted are going to bear good fruit. What's a good fruit? Love, joy, peace, goodness, kindness, long-suffering, right? Uh, Self-control. What are the benefits of deeply rooted Christians? Those are them, church. That's what God has called us to be. They hear the word. They accept it, meaning they're hearers of the word, but they're not only hearers, they're doers of the word. That's a deeply rooted Christian. That's when you know someone's deeply rooted because they're doers of the word. Lastly, Those that have dared to plant deep roots have this promise in Jeremiah as the worship team comes. In Jeremiah 17, 8, this is the last scripture I'm going to read this morning, then we're going to pray. It says, they will be like a tree planted by the water that sends out its roots by the stream. It does not fear when heat comes. My translation, it does not fear when coronavirus comes. Come on now. Its leaves are always green. It has no worries in a year of drought and never fails to bear fruit. That's the true mark of a deeply rooted Christian. Somebody that knows who their God is. Maybe this morning, as I'm closing, maybe this morning 
this is your first time watching a service. Maybe this morning you've never given your life to Jesus. Can I tell you this morning, friend, that he loves you? He's not waiting for you to get it all together. He says, come to me just as you are. I'm going to help you through. I'm going to be there for you. I'm the one you're going to be able to lean on. Amen. So if you've never given your heart or life over to Jesus and you want to do that this morning, all you have to do is say a prayer and plug yourself into a church. And here we are, Powerhouse. We'd love to have you. We'd love to welcome you to our family. If that's you this morning, I just want you, Holy Spirit, we just invite you in right now. If that's you, just close your eyes, would you? You feel the Lord tugging at your heart this morning. And repeat after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I surrender. I know I'm a sinner in need of your grace and mercy. I thank you for what you've done on that cross for my life. And I want to serve you. I want to know you. I want to love you, Jesus. I need your love, and I thank you for your love this morning. I thank you for your Holy Spirit this morning. I thank you for accepting me this morning. Come into my heart. Change my life. And I will follow you all the days of my life. Let your will be done in Jesus' mighty name. If you said that this morning, we just want to welcome you to the family. The Bible says that when one accepts the Lord, there's a party going on. The angels are rejoicing in heaven. That's God's purpose and plan for you, friend. He wants you. He wants all of you, every part of you. And he'll take it. He'll heal you this morning. He wants to bring healing to your mind and to your heart. So we just welcome you. And if that was you and if you said the, that prayer, why don't you go ahead and put on there, um, type in new or type in said the prayer so that we know we just want to connect with you. Um, we want to just invite you in, um, to these Zoom uh, meetings that we're having. And eventually, because this too is going to pass, we want to invite you to the house of God where we can come and meet you face to face. Amen. But you know, I talked about uh, shallow roots and deep roots this morning. And maybe um, you've been a little sensitive. You know, maybe this season, it's, it's, it's a tough season, church. We're all going through it together. The good thing is you're not alone. But maybe this season has really taken a toll. Maybe there's been a lot of distractions um, this morning. I want to pray for you. If you'll be honest, if you'll allow God to search your heart this morning. Can I do that? Can we just pray this morning? Let's pray. Father, I just thank you for this word. Your word, God. Your word for your people, Jesus. Father, I know, God, that you put this word in my heart for today because there's somebody that needed to be reminded, Jesus, that this earth, this life is not ours, God. We're not here forever, so we can't get comfortable where we're at, Lord. We have to continue to look to you, the author and the finisher of our faith. We look to you this morning, Jesus, for direction, God. I thank you for a fresh encounter as those that are praying this morning with me, this prayer. I thank you for a fresh encounter. I thank you for the Holy Spirit that is invading their space right now as they call upon the name of Jesus. I thank you for taking them deeper this morning, God. We will have deep roots. We will not waver. We will not fear. We will be sure and secure knowing that our faith and our trust is in you. You are our anchor that holds. And you're going to get us through this, Jesus. You're going to get us all through this, Jesus. We thank you this morning that you are our peace and our comfort. I speak peace to you this morning, church. Powerhousers, I love you. We're here. We're praying for you. But if you have a specific prayer, write it out. Type it out. Because daily we're interceding for you. Amen. Be blessed. Let's worship.
Let's give it to God. Let's surrender right there, right where you're at right now. Today is the day for a turnaround. Hallelujah. Bless you, people. Bless you.
God, you have an assignment, you have a plan, God, but we can only do it, God, when our roots are deep, God, when we seek you above everything else, God. We know, God, that you're going to meet every need. You're going to come through like never before. So we give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. We thank you for joining us. Come again on Wednesday. We're looking forward. Hallelujah. Wow, what a powerful and mighty word given by our very own Pastor Rosie. I pray that that word blessed you. I pray that it encouraged you. I know it did it for me. We want to go ahead and welcome you. If you are new and watching us, comment the word new. If you said the Salvation's Prayer today, comment prayer. We want to welcome you to the family. We also would love for you to befriend us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, and su subscribe to our YouTube channel. Also, just another reminder, Bible studies are still going on through Zoom. You can go ahead and reach out to your team leader for more information. We'll go ahead and see you again on Wednesday.